Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Matty with the Toasty Bros. And today we're gonna be gaming on two Macintoshes that are from 1986. One of the benefits of owning a PC business with PCBros.tech is we get some customers that come in wanting to trade stuff in. And uh, while these things are making noises, these were one of the things that were brought in to trade in for a, what ended up being, was it a gaming PC? It's like a five or $600 gaming PC, yep. Yeah, so they traded these in and we were like, you know what, normally we'd be like, oh, whatever, we don't really want that. But the fact that we can make a really cool video about it and show you guys what gaming is like, well, this one's making a lot of weird noises. We thought it'd be a good idea. But before we dive into this video, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Are you tired of your unactivated Windows install on your gaming PC? Well, today's video sponsor, GVG Mall, has you covered. GVG Mall is an online marketplace to gain access to really awesome discounted game keys, and more specifically, as we mentioned, Windows 10 licenses. It is incredibly easy to get your Windows 10 or 11 activation key from GVG Mall. Just use code TB20 to get a special discount, and then all you have to do is take that code, put it into Windows and boom, you have an activated Windows copy. We have been working with GVG Mall for several years now and we love the reliability of all the products they have to offer. So be sure to check the link in the description down below. Use code TB20 to save on your next purchase of a Windows key or other product from GVG Mall. So both of these computers are pretty much the exact same. They're both one megabyte Macintosh Pluses from 1986, which you can tell because they're the beige color. In 1987, they turned to a nice gray color. So we know we got really early on models this is basically when they came out and the crazy part is this system with the keyboard and mouse was over $2,600 in 1986 which is the equivalent of $6,500 or more in today's standards which yeah imagine having one of these back in the day so this is the third model in the Macintosh lineup which was introduced in January 16 1986 two years after the original Macintosh and a little more than a year after the Macintosh 512 K it originally shipped with one megabyte of RAM standard but it's expandable to four I have no clue if ours are upgraded they could be and they have have an external SCSI or SCSI peripheral bus. Now each one of these systems are the earliest Macintosh models that are able to run system software 5, 6, and 7. So we had to try to be careful with the discs that we picked out for this. Another quick fun fact is this Macintosh Plus was the longest produced Macintosh model all the way up until 2018 with the second gen Mac Pro. It lasted 1734 days with no changes. Now when we got these systems we obviously messed around with them for a little bit to see what we had and then we went ahead and bought some some games. So we have a handful of games here, which we think are just gonna work. Shout out to Retro Discs. They've made a lot of these like rebranded ones that should work perfectly fine in these systems. We'll find out here in a minute. We did buy this joystick thinking that it would work. And after some research, it doesn't look like it's gonna work. Joystick, whatever. Let us know in the comment section down below if there actually was some sort of joystick for these Macintosh Pluses and maybe we're just missing it. But this stuff is pretty old. And at some point, maybe if there was one, it's probably very retro mm -hmm. at this point and probably pretty expensive and hard to find. So we got one of these and it doesn't seem like it's gonna work. So we're just gonna be doing standard key and mouse gaming. Yeah, we might as well just go ahead and showcase these things a little bit and show what they can do. We actually got some other floppy drives with the computers that were just basic software. So like word processing, we had one for a car manufacturer that had information about a car if you bought it. We'll show you that here in a second. And um, yeah, we'll go ahead and look at those and then dive into some gaming. I'm not gonna go through each one of these discs, but as you can see, every single one of these is like a program or they're basically all programs actually, because these don't have operating systems. They're just kind of existing and you got to put in a disc. And then once you have a disc in, then you can do what you want. Meet your Macintosh Plus. Oh, it's like a little quick start oh, nice. guide. That's not a little quick start guide though. No, Nowadays it's, a... it's one sheet of paper. This probably is what came with at least one of them. So it's an Apple Macintosh Plus and look at that. I mean, that's, this might be actually like worth something. You got the OG, like you got your Apple logo and these are still in the actual box. It's a lot of cool software sampler. I didn't know I could do that. Wow. Wow. Oh my goodness. I read somewhere that on the inside of these, there's actually all the original makers names like Steve Jobs. I think Wozniak is in there and a few other people. It's actually like engraved on the inside of it. I would love to see that, but I really don't want to open these up. Let's see. Mac tools. Ooh, data recovery. Is that even a, was that a thing back then? I guess so. <laughs> this looks cool. This is like an an OG it's Photoshop super maybe. Paint. This is kind of interesting. So from the research that we did, we believe this to be an external drive essentially. So I think I read that this has like a four megabyte uh, storage disc in it. So it's basically just like a giant hard drive inside of here from what I could read. And then this right here, we think was so that you could get on the internet. That's our only guess at least, because you got like your telephone jack line that then would have gone to, I suppose, the Mac group the other way around. It looks like an old like a voicemail recorder. Image writer, is oh, that like a printer? a printer? Yeah, there might've been a printer with it. 
Yeah, yeah, I think it's a, an OG printer. Oh, look, the, the Macintosh, Macintosh Bible. Bible. Yes. Dude, that's awesome. And then it looks like our last book is right now for word processing for the Macintosh. But all right, well, there's your, your rundown. I'm gonna go ahead and put all this stuff back down and then Matt and I are gonna kind of do like a show off of the actual computers real quick. All right, so like Matt said, we think this is just a no-go, but yeah, it's kind of cool if you guys wanted to see it. It's just like an OG joystick that's supposed to be for Macintoshes, but I think it's for a little bit newer systems. I really love that we do get mouse and mice and keyboards. If you guys remember, Matt and I did a Commodore 64 video. We did not have a mice. There was no mouse at all back then. This is literally an all-in-one. But yeah, look at this mouse. Single clicker. It's really cool how it works. One thing that's kind of hard to remember is you, what is it? You have to hold, hold it. Hold and let go. Yeah, and let go when you want to click something. So you don't like, yeah, see, if you just click, it's really annoying. And I was like, wait, this is weird. Um, um, now these keyboards are super cool. So they are disconnectable. They use almost like a telephone jack, but smaller. And we found out that these are actually mechanical. I thought they felt a little, you know, let me just that sound. They're a little bit clanky, but from what I read, I think these are actually white Alp switches from about 1986. And these go for about $100 to $200 on eBay. And look at that, we got two of them, even different colors. This one was probably for a later model when they became gray. This is probably like the original OG that came with it. This is the one um, that the, some of the keys don't work. Some yeah. of them actually don't I can't activate. remember which ones anymore, yes. but we'll find out when we try to game. Kind of start with the Oregon I think Trail. Oregon Trail is, is a classic. That was a, an elementary school uh, classic for us. So I think I should be able to do it while it's um, on. I like that we got yeah. a nice new disc. Hopefully they'll, oh, that felt smooth. That was a lot smoother than big, okay, it didn't like it. Yeah, it shouldn't just be spitting them out for like no reason. Why? Don't stop so it. So not like that one? Didn't we have a list of ones that were like certain systems? Um, so they have like 800K and like 400K, which I think is the size, but you know what? The color's different. Maybe it didn't like the color. All right, this one's a 400K, so let's try that. Maybe one of the 400 that. ones will work? Okay, the 400Ks, it likes the 400. Maybe this one just isn't oh, built for eight. Okay, it worked. Yeah, maybe not. I thought read it could do 800, I thought. So we're doing Airborne first. Man, okay, so which two? We might not be able to do Matt Golf, who cares? Can't do Oregon Trail. Trail. That's a little bit of a disappointment. If we can get the other one working, maybe we could try that. But we still will have Flight Sim and Star Wars. All right, guys, it's time to try out Airborne, exclamation point. Really working hard. Look at that scenery. Oh, wow. Oh. Oh, you're just shooting stuff down. Oh this yeah, is actually... yeah, and I, I can aim it. This is already so much better than the Commodore. <laughs> it is a thousand times better than the Commodore. Well, in terms of its playability, yes. I, I actually, now I'm thinking about it, when you think about the year the Commodore came yes. out, it kind of was way, yes. we were playing some pretty crazy looking games. This is cool, you just basically aim up and down. Um, I don't know if you have a certain amount of ammo. You stop the airborne and attack. How do I shoot missiles? Because it does say I have missiles. Spacebar switches guns. Oh no, paratroopers. Get them. Isn't this like a war crime? I think I have to wait till they land, technically. Oh God, I've I lost. Oh, whoa. I forgot what I was doing. Oh dear. Oh. So they want you to commit war crimes? Yeah, I think once there's like too many on the ground, maybe I lose or something. Yeah, the the mouse sensitivity oh, is that. freaky though. So it's side to side. That makes oh, sense. is it? Yes. Okay, I was going up and down. Oh, I just got Ooh. destroyed. Click the continue. Featuring real sound. Yeah. Oh, you have ground troops coming in already. Can I shoot the ground troops this time? Well, I don't know. I mean, they don't move, so I guess it just doesn't matter. I think you just can't get too many of them down there or something. Uh, actually, they're just, oh. they're, they're just straight advancing right now. Oh, I'm done. I've been raided. But yeah, that works. Very um, playable. Very, very easy. Very playable. Very simple. Uh, we'll see if these other ones actually work. Enter Star Wars. Star Wars incoming. Will it work? Oh, it likes it. It smiled. It's, I, I like that. It smiles when it likes it. Welcome to Macintosh. Yeah, one of the, the um, interesting, another fun fact is one of the biggest problems with these systems is they have no fans from what I read. So like the power supply doesn't have a fan and I don't think there's a fan in the system. So that was its biggest problem was overheating back in the day. I'm a little sketched out. Star Wars, look at Darth Vader. That's kind of weird, you having to launch the application? I'm a little scared. He's a little scared, is this gonna work? Because most of the time it just launched. Oh, oh yeah, yes. Yeah. Oh, wait, here we go. You know what's crazy to think about is this game, I think, came out in 86 or 87. Didn't Star Wars come out in, like, 79? Yeah. So this really would have been, like, like, Star Wars probably was so popular. This is, this is, this is nutty. It seems kind of laggy. It does. <laughs> it's like Galaga, but Star Wars. <laughs> I thought, like, farting noises. It's not... <laughs> this kind of like a Galaga mixed with uh, Space Invaders. The thing, the thing Galaga kind of lacked, you know? Shoot TIE Fighters. I, I mean, I'm shooting them. Don't you worry. Oh, it is the Death Star I'm approaching. Look at the size of that thing. We're running, we're running, boys. Shoot fireballs. How do I shoot fireballs? What, what, I, oh, okay. Keep going. We're, on, we're, we're clear to, to win the first wave. I am on easy, by the way. I can see why. I did it. Oh, there goes the Death Star. 
Wow. One in a million, look at me. Nice, Star Wars worked, let's try something else. So we're gonna try... We're gonna try Matt Golf, since maybe it was just Oregon Trail was like a bad game or something. I mean, I don't I get don't... how it knows so quickly, cause like, I'm sure someone in the audience I, can It might us. be like the physical like size of the Well, the I'm, dude, I'm looking and like everything, I, so while Matt yeah. was playing, I was really, I was studying guys. <laughs> and I'm like, I just don't see any indicator that it could see that quickly to be like, oh, this, is, this isn't this is right. Well, yeah, I guess, I guess maybe I should have played it a little safer and uh, stuck with the 400K. But we have flight simulators, the last game that's 400K. Oh, we do. <gasps> It doesn't like flight, really? Sam. Oh no. Why oh no. It, why flight. is it smiling and then not working? It smiles and says no thank you. All right guys, we just got done testing or benchmarking, if you will, <laughs> our Macintosh Pluses. And you know, we had some roadblocks. These are from 1986 and they are very well used. And honestly, I think every single video we've done like this, we have games not work, we have things not work. Obviously, for whatever reason, we could not get our 800K games to work, but we also couldn't get one of the 400K games to work. So it might just have an old disc reader that's not working that well anymore. So yeah, that's the joy of this old hardware and our lack of expertise in mm -hmm. this hardware. Somebody back in 1986 who was in the IT field would know a lot about these. Let us know in the comment section down below if you owned one of these things back in 1986 and if this was a fun little nostalgia trip for you, let us know as well. And if there's any other retro hardware you want us to take a look at and keep an eye out for, let us know as well. So as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash Toasty Bros. And do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. So if you happen to want to get a retro gaming system, we actually do have like Windows 95 computers here and there with all the games. We're actually going to have one of these for sale with all the games and everything. So if you guys are into that kind of stuff, feel free. But if you want to buy a modern gaming system, we definitely got you covered too. PC Bros. Tech, gaming PCs, gaming laptops, and so much more. If you use code Toast Bros. 2 on checkout, you'll save a whopping 2% on your next purchase. See you guys later. Goodbye. Peace out.